Hello, happy viewers, and welcome to Golden Age Technology on Supreme Master Television. Today, we present the conclusion of a two-part series introducing the Venus Project, a holistic, resource-based vision of the future advocated by celebrated American inventor, designer, and futurist Jacques Fresco. Mr. Fresco was born in 1916 and grew up in New York City, USA. He has a background in industrial design and previously worked as a consultant and researcher in the aviation industry. He has authored numerous books, including Designing the Future, produced and been featured in documentaries and traveled extensively, promoting his ideas in television and radio interviews and seminars throughout the world. The Venus Project is a comprehensive plan to create a world where humans, animals, and nature coexist peacefully. The goal is to resolve all of today's serious world issues, such as climate change and hunger, through a restructuring of global society. Mr. Fresco is confident that this enormous transformation would usher in a new age of harmony, prosperity, and cultural advancement. Implementation of the Venus Project would move us away from the current monetary-based economic system to a resource-based economy where our planet's gifts are designated as the heritage of all people. Designers and engineers would build holistic, sustainable cities using advanced technology. We have chapters all over the world of the Venus Project. We encourage you to look at our website. We have the Venus Project design teams where we have over 1,600 people who have signed up so far. We're going to be working on um, more detailed blueprints for, for our city designs. We have a Corsan project where in one of Jacques' old books he talks about Corsan, the centralized computer, which um, is a database and organizes technically everything on a global basis within a resource-based economy. Under the Venus Project's plan, how is energy generated for our cities? energy for the city of the future. Photovoltaic on rooftops. There will also be within the structure itself a composite material and when the sun's out and the structure moves they'll be called pressure transducers. They generate electricity by expansion and contraction. So all the roadways, all the rooftops are not only photovoltaic but they're heat concentrators. In regions where you have natural volcanic energy you use the heat of volcanoes to boil water and turn turbines and there's enough volcanic energy to propel the earth for thousands of years. Just that alone if we develop it harnessing the Gulf Stream. These waters move. Under the ocean there are cold water streams, there are hot water streams moving in different directions. We can harness them by putting a turbine in there. There are thousands of different ways of generating electricity. You don't need oil or gasoline or coal. These are filthy ways. There's very little waste in the future. Today we manufacture things to wear out and break down. So you have piles of television sets, computers, cell phones in the junkyard. Piles of it. In the future we design things to last. So you can just change a part very easily by plugging it in. And pull out the transistor, put in another one. It'll blink and tell you where the problem is. Your cell phone will repair itself when it can. In other words, the way a machine repairs itself, it has, say, three resistors or transistors. And when one fails, the other one rotates it, plugs in. I think machines can do almost anything man can do except feel. Mr. Fresco has proposed innovative solutions to many of the environmental issues facing the world such as the global shortage of clean, potable water. When it rains, we harness the water. We direct the water to storage basins. Instead of floods, we build canals all across the world in different countries. And those canals terminate the flood waters 
into strip mining where we dug big holes in the earth we left these ugly places all over the world in the future we will store flood waters there to be used at a later date we don't pour chlorine in the water do you know that most embalming fluids are in all the reservoirs of all the big cities. You can't put embalming fluid in dead people and not know that it doesn't go down into the ground and contaminate the water table. When you spray poisons on plants, it's very hard to wash those poisons off because they do go inside the food you eat. So everybody is be slowly poisoning with artificial coloring, artificial taste, artificial flavoring, nothing will be artificial. Everything in the future will be organically grown. The Venus Project calls for building cities in the sea, which would include research and learning centers dedicated to bettering the ecological conditions in our oceans. We do have cities in the sea of many different designs. The purpose of the city in the sea is a, is a university really at sea. It's to train marine sciences, marine biologists. And what they do is they restore the reefs, restore the damage. Well, the cities in the sea have units out away from the city. It's called a wedge. It's made of concrete and it's got cells in it. And the concrete is towed out and mounted about a mile in front of an island. So if the Sami curves, the waves are parted a mile out, the heavy seas, you understand? That's how we deal with tsunamis. Earthquakes are generally based upon pressures in the earth that build up over time. We will have sensors. We can dig holes six miles deep today with mining equipment. We can put sensors deep in the earth that can let us know well in advance when the pressure build up is occurring. How much will it cost? We don't have that problem in the future. Do we have the resources to do? Yes, we do. And that's all that counts. The Venus Project's headquarters is located in a pristine area of South Central Florida, USA, on a nine hectare parcel of land. The site features a research center and a number of other buildings designed by Mr. Fresco and Ms. Meadows. Within the structures are housed many models, illustrations, blueprints, and exhibits related to the Venus Project. The center runs informational workshops for the public where participants are able to discuss Jacques Fresco's ideas face to face with him. There will be many different types of buildings in the future. Different people with different interests will want to select different types of buildings. But in most instances, most of the buildings are curvilinear. They're, they have curves or bent lines, and that makes the building much stronger and uses far less material. So there would be lots of deck space on buildings so that people can relax. As you notice all the deck space on these buildings, but people will pick a building that suits their profession and their interest. So the buildings will vary depending on the interest of the occupant. Other than that, there'd be a very wide selection of what buildings people can live in. All the lines are curved, which makes the building much stronger. And the boats and helicopter is there for your use. In the future, I don't think people will want to own anything anymore. Everything is there for their use, but you don't own anything. You live in the building as long as you like. You can travel any place you want to travel. And then if you come over here, this may be a model of an art center in the future where artist materials, you have access to any material you want. There's no fee anymore. And so what you see here is different buildings and different mechanisms that serve a different purpose. This represents joint venture of all the world's people going out in the space together and using it for the benefit of everyone. Now if you come over here, you'll see these are exhibition buildings. Some of them we built for China originally. 
and uh, this represents a rooftop landing area and the rooftop gardens will be on all buildings in the future. All of the larger buildings will have rooftop gardens or solar generators as part of the roof. Jacques Fresco sees all repetitive tasks being performed by automated machinery in the future, enabling people to have more free time to explore their areas of interest and help advance society. This is the way we produce buildings in the future. This is a machine that has a die placed in this area and then it ex squeezes the buildings out like that and then a laser beam cuts them. And this machine picks the building off and transfers it to this machine. And this machine, if I can change my position, if you can see this, this machine shoves the building onto that ramp. It shoves it on like that, and once it gets there, the memory metals lock and keep it in place. The buildings will be put up in dry dock. That means like ships are built. Then the machine that looks like this will travel along putting in the windows and everything. And then when the buildings are finished, say you got like 10 buildings finished in here, then we flood it with water and the buildings are built on a float and we float the building to the location. Then we use water jets under the building. So we slip the building in place, right like that. Instead of bringing building material out there and cut it up and make it, we make them all in dry dock and we move them on water because on water you can move heavy freight and it doesn't have to be fast. And this machine lowers this building over the canal and the water evaporates by the sun and condenses on the inside and you get drinking water desalinization without expenditure of energy using the sun. After we fill this with salt water, it's for irrigation and flood control. So all this water is directed towards the water storage basins, so you don't have flooding. Mr. Fresco sees a future where computer systems will monitor the world's environment and provide timely, accurate information on events that need our immediate attention. This represents the government of the future. It would be cybernated. That means that computers will monitor farm production, uh, harvest the crop, plant the seeds, and maintain their um, packaging and everything else. Whereas these various image screens will give you an image of any part of the earth. This represents a hurricane. So you can see on these screens any area on Earth from 3,000 miles out in space you can photograph plant diseases. They show up as red. If you photograph the Amazon jungle you'll see a dark red area which means those plants are ill or sick. And so you can maintain with a satellite as the Earth rotates under the satellite you'll be able to show people everything on earth and every airplane in the air and every ship at sea. When you ask the computer how many planes are there in the air at this instant, it'll tell you exactly. It'll tell you 10,408, 9, 10, and you'll be in touch with every area of the earth by these screens. There is no government in the future. The government is maintained electronically but it's programmed to monitor food transportation, monitor the earth, hurricanes, tsunamis, and tell people, warning them of any problems. So everyone will have this which gives them information about the earth. Until we learn to control tsunamis and the weather, which I believe man will eventually be able to do, man will eventually be able to control hurricanes, the weather, and most disastrous. 
Supreme Master Ching Hai has also spoken about the potential for wondrous technology to be available on our planet in the future, as in this excerpt from a July 2008 video conference with Supreme Master Television staff in Los Angeles, California, USA. The technology that we're having right now is nothing, nothing, compared to what we will have if all the population of the planet turn into a loving, kind, compassionate vegetarian diet. Then you will see all kind of invention that we have never imagined before will surface. And all people will live in peace and love even if they don't pray for it. It will come. Our sincere thanks, Jacques Fresco and Roxanne Meadows, for taking time to introduce the Venus Project and its underlying philosophy to us. May a sustainable planet with everyone's needs met soon be a reality. For more information on the Venus Project and to see available books, DVDs, and CDs by Mr. Fresco, please visit www.thevenusproject.com. Download a free ebook version of Jacques Fresco's Designing the Future in various languages at the same website. Blessed viewers, thank you for joining us today on Golden Age Technology. Next on Supreme Master Television is Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living, after noteworthy news. May we always strive to elevate our world through compassionate actions and loving thoughts. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash GAT.